Hi everyone, so this is a quick video I'm going to put together with um, a few photos I took over the Ardacon weekend. Um, it took place a couple of weeks ago um, in Manchester at the uh, Mercure Hotel. Um, it was a brilliant venue, um, stayed over there a couple of nights and um, had three full days of gaming. Um, the first evening was um, the Chaos and Arda games, which to be honest was a great icebreaker, but at the same time it was almost a little bit too intense for my liking on the Friday. Um, in effect you had four people around a 4x4 board and you would draw cards um, as the game progressed and these could involve um, either objectives that you have to complete in that turn or in subsequent turns or um, it could be something that would affect the game so um, we had a rule which appeared which meant that if your um, models were within a one I think it was one inch of um, any sort of woodland terrain they would have to roll the dice to see whether they could actually move away from the woodland um, and it was great fun um, but I think I might have got myself in a bit of a pickle because when I first um, came onto the board I was then promptly surrounded by six trolls um, because you roll a scatter dice to see what edge of the board you come on at and unfortunately for me out of the four people three of them all came on at the same edge and two of them had trolls so it was great fun but it almost felt a little bit too intense for the first night um, doubles felt a lot easier which was done on the um, Sunday evening but I'll just run through a couple of bits and pieces it was brilliant it was a great fun weekend um, I didn't do too well in the um, grand tournament itself I actually only won one match out of um, six and I no disrespect to the guy who I beat I think he might have been 12 13 maybe so yeah I didn't do particularly well but I still had a great time and the way it was structured which is one thing I really liked is that the um, lower you got down in the tables ranking so after each match you were ranked and then you were put on a certain table but to put you in the sort of someone with someone with a similar sort of um, point score but the further you got down the more interesting the boards got and so at the top tables they were just a plain board with a couple of bits and pieces of um, terrain on them but the further down you got you got some really nice um, boards I mean I played on one which was um, I suppose it was meant to be sort of like Mines of Moria and that had lots of pillars and lots of hills and it wasn't um, equally distributed for the terrain so it did feel it was great fun so I'll just run through um, and go through the pictures I got so this is the first one it's just a quick shot of the um, army that I took so I've got Gandalf and a few riders of Rohan and things like that um, I didn't have many numbers compared to most people and my sort of like I suppose tactical naivety was what really did me there are a couple of matches where I left Gandalf too exposed or was deploying in such a large chunk that whenever I played it against a wizard I just got blasted but it was great fun so this is a just look at some of the boards they had um, that's sort of like I suppose meant to be like a Pelennor Fields um, Siege of Minas Tirith with all the siege towers moving forward sadly I didn't get a chance to play on that one but it did look like great fun um, this was a Goblin Town board I think this I think this was done by the War Games Association of Reading and they're not actually too far away from me so I might have to try and get and see if I can get to some of their events I know they do big sort of like one day shows and things like that but so this is their Goblin Town board which looks amazing I mean, if unfortunately for me, if I'd played on this, I'd have been screwed because cavalry are not making their way around that board at all. But it does look, it looks fantastic. Um, then you've got a couple of small sort of town boards. Um, they've got just got foreground buildings and a couple of bits of scatter strain on them. Um, we did play a match on these. These were fun because it it felt a bit more involved than some of the top tables. So you've got another one there with just some, um, I think they were solid solid resin buildings, which were really nice. Um, these are some of the um, boards and pieces of terrain made by people and brought along. Um, I believe these were mainly come from um, War Games clubs, but a few people have put quite a lot of effort into making um, hobbit holes and things like that. I mean, that one looks amazing. Didn't get to play on it, but it was an impressively sized piece of terrain. I think I think it might have been done by Stephen Crow. I know th I know this one was. If it's not Stephen Crow, I apologise, but. And this as well, the prancing pony that he made. Did have a um, battle on this one. 
and it was really, really nice. Um, I'll see if I've got the battle picture to come up next. But yeah, there you go. So that's the um, fight I had, sort of a Rohan against Rohan, an almost identical list. Um, so it was late in the evening. We were all absolutely exhausted. And so the guy I was playing against, we just said, well, okay, well, it'll be quite a laugh if we just line them up against each other and then charge. So we did. We just smashed the line, smashed together. And unfortunately, mine crumbled first. But that was good fun. Um, so these ones, these are made by people who um, make their own fan magazine. It's called SBG, and they've done a Dogwood Ore board. And so this is just sort of a couple of shots showing how they've laid it out. So there you can see Gandalf sort of like sprawled out as he is in the Hobbit films after being captured. Um, they set it out with obviously elves fighting against Azog and his minions. Got a couple of nice scenes of um, the White Council. So you can kind of see in the background there um, Elrond, Sauron, and um, Gladriel in the centre with Gandalf kind of sprawled on the floor. They're fighting against the Necromancer and um, the Nine, so like the Ring Wraiths. But it's just an amazing board. It looks fantastic. The amount of effort they put into it, they just look amazing. Even the quality of the painting of the figures as well was something else. This wasn't for use for um, playing on. This was just a display piece that they did, but it was very effective, and to be honest, I wouldn't mind something like this for myself, but I'm guessing that they probably sold quite a lot of magazines off the back of people seeing this. Um, this shot is just of the first game I played. Um, this is the one I managed to win. So you can see my two batches of cavalry, one going around the flank, one in the center, and the guy I'm playing against is just sort of like um, slowly bringing his elves around. Now, um, when I first, when he first came over and he had elves, I was kind of worried because they've got a lot of shooting and quite a bit of good magic. But he didn't really make the most of it, and so he spent the majority of the game trying to chase me across the board. Um, the objective of the game we were playing, I think it was, um, it might have been hold ground or something like that, but the objective is to get that marker in the middle. Get as many models as you can within six inches of that, and you get a victory point for each one. And so I managed to entice him to chase me off um, the marker and then sort of like counter and charge into him and sandwich him between my two cavalry forces so I managed to win that one I think it was 17-9 or something so I was over the moon with that um, this is a sort of a shot of the Minas Tirith board that they had um, I did manage to get a couple of games on this this was on the um, we played this on the doubles so I'll bring up the game pictures as well next but this was fantastic this just I th I'm guessing these games workshop ones, but it looked really amazing. So that's the game in progress. So you've got um, the, um, I think they were Gundabad orcs fighting against Menemins Tirith. You kind of see the cavalry in the background flanking round. But it was just a fantastic board to play on. It was so much fun as well because it wasn't equal. There was no sort of, um, you could use the tactical advantage. So my cavalry, you can see on the flank there, are kind of moving around and they've got a few of their um, characters, their heroes, hidden behind the, the left-hand tower, just trying to stay out of charge range of my cavalry, because if my cavalry had got in, we could have cut them to pieces. Um, this is impressive as well. This is a sort of like six-foot high ore tank that someone built. It just looks amazing. You can see uh, Grima Wormtongue at the top. There's um, an Isengard army as well that someone's put in. And then Saruman just poking his head out. Um, well, that's about it, really. It's a, it was an amazing weekend, and it was really well organised. Um, I have heard some people say that, oh, we could have done this, could have done that, but this is the first tournament I've been to, so I don't think I would be in a position to say anything like that. Um, but the last two pictures I've got, which I'll put up at the sort of end, are of the new releases that have been... Well, one of the new releases. So the first one is uh, Day 9 for Lord of the Iron Hills, and that's by Forge World. And it is an amazing model. They've also got a set of Iron Hills Dwarfs and the Blister, which you can see in the background slightly. I was kind of put off by the price. I mean, Dane for one foot and one mounted was £40. Um, the Blister was £50 for one Blister. And 12 um, foot troops, so the Dwarves, were £40 as well. I know it's Forge World, and the quality of what I've seen that people have been posting the quality of the miniatures is absolutely amazing. 
but at present I couldn't feel I couldn't stretch myself to that budget so what I settled for instead was this one I've picked myself up a um, it's a sort of mini diorama the final fate of the witch king and so it's just Eowyn and uh, Merry fighting against the witch king I'm going to try and make it so that I can keep them on 25mm bases so that I can use them for game pieces as well but that might take some um, sawing and hacking up for the base and maybe expanding it to make the most of like the diorama that I've got there but it's amazing, I can't wait to start with that one it does look fantastic but um, thanks for watching and um, if anyone's went to Ardacon and I saw you there it was uh, great to meet you I'll speak to you soon, bye